nice to be here in Pasadena. Uh, I was just recently performing in Hiawatha, Kansas. Yeah. Hiawatha, Kansas, it is a nice town. There's just not a lot of diversity there. Like, I always know I'm in trouble when even the people standing out in front of Home Depot are white. <laughs> when hotel maids speak English, I get nervous. Before that, I performed at a black women's empowerment dinner. Yeah, you know that didn't go well. <laughs> I pissed them off right away, but the way I pissed them off was kind of silly to me because the thing that they got mad about was the fact that I let them know I thought Michael Jackson had done it. Yeah, I didn't really understand the big deal. I thought everybody felt that way. The reason I feel that way is because I find it hard to believe anybody likes kids that much. <laughs> it's true, folks. Not even parents like kids that much. Spend a day with kids, they cry, they whine, they want everything. At the end of the day, all you want is their bad little asses to go to sleep. You don't want to stay up all night drinking Jesus juice with them. I will tell you guys, there is one thing I agree with Michael Jackson on. I agree with Michael Jackson when he says the media treats him more harshly than other people. I agree with that. Do you guys remember a couple years back, he got into all that trouble over dangling his kid off the balcony? Yeah, I didn't think that was very fair. I didn't think that was very fair at all because nobody said a word when Mufasa did the exact same thing with Simba. <laughs> and that was a cliff. And Mufasa didn't even do it himself. He let Rafiki do it. <laughs> Baboon. You guys ever see a homeless guy sitting on the sidewalk drinking a beer and think to yourself, well, aren't we having a relaxing day? <laughs> I'm going to be a little off tonight. I know this because I uh, recently had to quit drinking, or at least that's what the judge said. <laughs> and I realized I had been drinking too much. You know you've been drinking too much when you have to call your friends the next day to make sure they're still talking to you? Or you get deleted off a couple MySpace accounts. It's like I was in your top eight yesterday. What happened? Did used to drink way too much, though. Picked it up in Vegas. I don't know if anybody here has been to Vegas. Yeah, I lived there for four years. I don't know where the slogan came from. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. When I lived there, the slogan was Las Vegas. Come on vacation, leave on probation. <laughs> And there you just drink all the time. You know, I just drink morning, afternoon, and night. To be honest with you guys, if I hadn't been for all the speed, I don't know how I would have gotten through it. <laughs> I have been sober for a while for anybody that thinks they're looking at a tweaker now. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you what's a fun sober trip. Going to visit the parents. Yeah, my parents are cool, but they're starting to get on my nerves because I've asked them over and over to stop making changes to the house. Still, every time I go home, something's different. Yeah, I don't think this is very fair because ever since I was little, they let me know that when they die, I get the house. And we don't have the same taste. I mean, do these selfish people not realize how much of their money it's going to cost me to get this house back the way I want it? My parents are really nice to me, though. Like a couple years back, two years ago, I went home for my birthday and they bought me a new car. But the kind of car I got was a brand new Oldsmobile Alero. Yeah, kind of an old man car. I guess I am in great because I let them know I would have preferred a Honda. Then they got me back when they let me know they would have preferred a straight son. <laughs> Don't act like nobody in here knew I was gay. <laughs> I will tell you guys, LA is one of the few places I feel like I have to say that I'm gay. In other cities, I feel like people can just tell. In LA, it can be really hard to tell who's gay, who's metro, and who's just Armenian. I usually perform in really white and rednecky rooms. I perform in some rooms that are so white and rednecky, sometimes my act doesn't even feel like an act. It feels like a really long suicide note. <laughs> I don't get asked to do a lot of gay shows. I don't get asked to do gay shows because I'm honest about the fact that I don't understand everything other gay people do either. It's true, like a couple weeks back, I was at a gay pride parade. There were points where I was watching the parade where I remember thinking to myself, this is really gay. <laughs> Can we take it down a notch, please? I'm getting uncomfortable. 
I don't understand the gay pride bumper sticker. For anybody that's not familiar, that's a rainbow flag. Yeah, I myself don't have one of these because does my car really have to be gay too? <laughs> and if you're a guy and you put one of these bumper stickers on like a Mini Cooper, a Mazda Miata, don't we already know you're gay? <laughs> I sometimes offend other gay people and I don't even mean to. Give you guys an example. Not too long ago, I'm hanging out outside of a club. Woman walks up to me and starts talking to me. Halfway through the conversation, she lets me know she's a lesbian. So I'm like, okay, cool. She's like, did you know I was a lesbian as soon as you saw me? And I was like, no, actually, when I first saw you, I thought you were a man that had really let himself go. Do the road a bit. I get tired of people asking me the same questions over and over. Like people ask me about things like gay marriage and gay adoption. Gay marriage, I don't really like to talk about a whole lot because I feel like I'm letting people down. Because as ungatriotic as this is going to sound, <laughs> I'm not big on gay marriage, but then I'm not big on marriage, period. And maybe that's because I've been in long term relationships. And I don't know if anybody here has ever had this happen before, but has anybody? ever had somebody use the end of a relationship as an excuse to basically rob you? Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? You just come home and stuff's missing and you feel like, did you really want to break up or did you just need some new It's <laughs> the rough part about being gay, you can actually lose your boyfriend and your favorite pair of pants in the same day. Gay adoption I don't talk about for another reason. That's because I'll get in arguments with people. Because my personal feeling is that as long as people can otherwise pass the screening process, they should be allowed to adopt. Argument I get is always the same, though, and that's that the kids will get confused. But to tell you guys the truth, I don't buy this argument. Because when I was growing up, I knew a couple of kids that had lesbian moms, and I never really saw what was so confusing. I'd always just assume dad was one with the mullet and mom had the short perm. <laughs> I think the only people I'm worried about having kids are transsexuals, and that's just because I think it'll be kind of scary for the kids having mom's temper and dad's strength in the same body. <laughs> no more waiting till dad gets home. I'm going to kick your ass myself. <laughs> Get tired of people asking me what I am. That's another thing I get tired of, you know. People always want to know what I am. By what I am, they mean what's my ethnic background. A lot of people mistake me for Asian or Filipino, which I don't usually mind. The only time I get worried is when people ask if I'm Native American, because it always makes me wonder if I've been drinking too much. <laughs> Tell you guys the funny thing about that joke. I notice a lot of times when I do it, the white people in the audience get really uncomfortable. And I don't understand that because it's just a little alcoholism joke. I mean, it's not like I stole their land. <laughs> and besides, I don't do that joke because I stereotype anyway. I do that joke because I was raised in a small town in Arizona, right outside an Indian reservation, spent a lot of time drinking and partying with natives. One girl in particular, I think her Indian name was Sleep Sambar. Yeah, so I don't think it's racist when I say that drinking with natives is a part of how I ended up in AA. Just like I don't think it's racist when I say that smoking weed with black people is a part of how I ended up in Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>